Hello YouTube, this is DXLinkJ, another video. So, uh, while building my ALU over there, it's starting to get boring and monotonous. I wasn't really enjoying it, so I started, I took a break. And started to build other things, mess around with other logic gates, and I decided to try and give memory a chance. Beforehand, I had tried to design my own memory circuit, and that, that didn't work out very well. And then I asked for the Xbox Nuts help, and he recommended this one schematic, which is on the wiki. I think it's either the D-latch or the D-flip-flop, and it's the last diagram, I'm pretty sure. You can look it up yourself. And he rec recommended to me, because in that one picture there, one diagram, there are two two separate D-latches. And he rec recommended to me the left one. Well, for my purposes, the right one is more useful. I don't know why, because the left one just doesn't seem to work for me sometimes. I don't know. And so this is a 4-bit register. It's got inputs and all of the all of the set or clock bits are controlled by this one right here. And here are the outputs, these torches. <laughs> I know this this isn't really pretty. I just did this really quickly. So let's uh let's put something here. Let's do this. And then I I set them or I clock them. And there you go. See, and I can I can take away these these inputs and it doesn't do anything. It remembers. And if if I set it again, it'll go back to its original state. So yeah, I think this is pretty cool. This isn't all I've been working on though. Now this this wall this monstrosity is a it's a 32-bit adder. Yes, 32. It's it's really it's big. Um, I use the adding the adder schematic on the wiki. I used a half adder, and then I used full adders for this bottom one, the alternate full out fat, f uh, full adder. I think that's the name of it. And I used it for this row and for this row, for the the uh, middle of those two rows and the top row. I had to take the design and flip it around so the carry can go one to the other to the other to, to the other to the other and up and then up again and like that till it comes to the end uh... now it's uh, not finished it's uh... it's kinda raw it's just the gates you know if you wanted to input you'd have to go all the way up there but i think a thirty two well a thir i know a thirty two bit adder is used in real world uh, designs. Right, let me. Okay, I know it's used in real world designs. It's used in real computers, and I think it can add up to a number around four billion or so. I'm pretty sure. I know that an eight bit adder can only add up to a number to two hundred fifty six. This can add up to around four billion or so. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Oh yeah, I, I want to fix this. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, I've I worked with dispensers a little bit. Oh, here's the memory. Dispensers. Um. And I don't know why, but it seems that when you you have to have the inputs from different places. If someone could tell me about this stuff and help me to understand it, doesn't make sense to me at all. Right now, all of them are being shot out, and if I were to put something in all of them, they would be shooting out really quickly. Let's turn it off. It's kind of annoying. Um, hang on. Ah, creeper bed. Let's go to sleep. Let's watch the moon. Ah, let's hope a creeper doesn't blow us up. Okay. Um, 
Now, there's something I kind of wanted to explain that I really haven't, and I should have it from the beginning. With my ALU, I started designing it a really long time ago. And back then, I mean, not that long ago, but still, back then there wasn't a wiki with designs. Well, there was, but it wasn't as complex as it is now. There wasn't any of that stuff. I had to design all of this from scratch, basically. Like, my adders down here, the, my original ones, which didn't work very well, they were they were huge. They're not as small as the ones in my 32-bit adder. And, and now, now I, I'm not using that particular design, but now I am actually using a a design for my adders that is used in a supercomputer, which I think is kind of cool. I found a design schematic for the, you know, in the real world IRL for a supercomputer, and I use that, and it's kind of small. I could compact it more, but I really don't feel like it. And so, and for every function, I mean, some of them, like the anders and the orders, those aren't really complex, but like the XOR with comparator, yeah, that that's really complex. That's why it's so big. It's probably the biggest function. It's the function that tells you if the numbers are the same, and it also tells you if the if one number is larger than the other, and it tells you if I think it tells you if the number is zero. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, and this is the decoder. I've recently I've been watching a lot of videos where people use decoders. And it makes me see how silly mine is, because this is just in its raw form. And it's huge. This is a 3x8 decoder, and I've seen it in a much smaller space. It's silly. But I'm going to keep it the way it is, because I like it, because I designed it. Now look, a cow. And a chicken. Chicken. I got distracted. And, uh... That, yeah, that's all. That's basically why my ALU is so big. It could be so much smaller. In fact, um, the Xbox Nut, who I've mentioned a few times, he did a series of videos where he created an ALU. It was only 4 bit, and it is so much smaller than mine. Mine might actually be way too big for the blocks, the chunks to load. Not chunks, but whatever they are and maybe in some video I'll go into detail about each particular part although I think I already did that I'm not sure like in zero I, I designed this myself it's a, it's quite simple really anyone could do it it's a it's eight um, eight or gates connected up to more or gates up to this one and then the the uh, output is inverted. So if any one of these are on, it's going to turn this off, which then will tell you, hey, the output's not zero. Uh, oh yeah, one more thing. One more thing I want to show you guys. And it's it's my favorite thing. I, I think this is clever, and I like it. Okay. In case you don't know, I'm, I am using uh, Misa's HD texture pack, which... I usually don't use texture pack uh, texture packs. I like the raw look of the game, but I like this one. It's kind of cool. And in case you don't know, those are note blocks. And I want to show you something really cool. Look, old spice. Haha. <laughs> I don't know how well you can hear this, but uh, all right. Let's make sure the loop is off. Here we go. Cake! <gasps> That's so cool. I like it. It's the Old Spice jingle. And it gives you cake. See? Cake. And now I have some cake. <laughs> it's a strawberry. I'm going to play it so you can hear it better. I'll be closer. Pretty cool, and it gives it's gonna it gives you a piece of cake every time. 
The only way you can stop this is if you break the line, and there's a function right here to loop it. It just goes through an AND gate. <sighs> I think that's pretty cool. And a clever thing I did is I designed it so uh, it gives you the piece of cake first before it replays itself. So if you want a piece of cake, you gotta listen to the Old Spice theme song. Jingle, whatever it is. <laughs> um, that's it. That's all I've really been working on recently. Oh, I don't, I don't know if you can hear that, but something just went off. Um, I'm going to start doing other things. I'm going to start like. I need to take a break from all of this computer and logic stuff. Although my next uh my next redstone project is going to be RAM. I'm thinking of creating uh sixty four bytes of RAM or two hundred fifty yeah, two hundred and fifty six bytes of RAM. Which is a lot. I think that's like equivalent to the Atari twenty six hundred. I'm not sure. Um, I'm, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to work on that project on a server. I'm, I don't know which, which server in particular. Um, there are uh, quite a few servers that I like that look interesting and fun. One of them is InfraZooms, well, Infrared, Infra, his YouTube name is InfraZoom. He hosts a server, him and SC Joiner and a bunch of other people. And he's pretty cool. He looks he looks fun. Uh oh yeah, and I'm gonna start posting other kinds of videos, not just Minecraft. I'm thinking about doing some StarCraft videos, some StarCraft two videos. I don't, I don't know if you guys will like that. I like StarCraft, so maybe I'll do that. Um I might do some let's play videos like maybe let's play videos like any normal let's player or maybe like ethos lab let's plays you know where he builds things in them i might do that because i i enjoy building things like this and i kind of want you guys to see the process um and i i have a bunch of stuff planned so I'm, I'm looking forward to to making more videos and whatnot. I've I've recently got a better mic and I have fraps now. Well, I've had fraps for a while, but I you know I really have it now. Um, I here, let me go over because I've mentioned a bunch of people in this video and I want to. Uh, I want to go over them again, and I, I don't know if I will, but I might put their links in the description. So, the Xbox Nut, he's a good friend of mine. That's his YouTube name. Uh, who else? Uh, the Jessassin, he's, he's really cool. He's one of my subscribers. He makes a lot of good videos. You should check him out. Um, Infrared, or Infrazoom, is what his YouTube name is, Infrazoom. He hosts a server. He's a he seems like a pretty cool guy. Uh, SC Joiner. He also is some is a pretty cool guy. And Ethos Lab. He he makes amazing things with redstone. Amazing things. Um. That that's all I really have to talk about. That's basically what I've been doing for the past. I don't know few weeks, months, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, that's that's about it. So, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, comment, you know, do all that that cool YouTube things. So, yep. again, thanks for watching, and bye!